Hey guys, so I wanted to make a quick video here. I was just looking through some of the videos I made a few months ago, and it seemed like we were getting a lot of good questions and feedback on a couple videos that were about the inverted snowblower versus other types of equipment. Uh, we had one on the extendable back dragger as well as one on the um, extendable or not extendable, but uh, wing plow on the back of a, of a truck. I can't remember which up. Uh, back drag plow pull plow whatever the heck you call those things like the eblings um and it seems like that uh, was some pretty valuable content for some of you guys so i just wanted to continue in making that series and i figured we'd better start with the basics so i think the most basic comparison we can make is the conventional three-point hitch snowblower compared to the inverted snowblower and to give you a bit of context as to why I want to start with that one, I was not a believer in the inverted snowblower at all when I started doing snow with my first uh, tractor setup. And there's several reasons for that, but I, I had just seen some videos of the inverted and I thought it looked kind of cool on the big tractors, but I didn't think it would work for a little three series size tractor. Um, one of my biggest fears was getting over the snow, just driving over with a little tractor. I, I thought you would get stuck all the time. And I was also worried about driving over the snow before you remove it because I figured you'd probably end up packing down the snow and have a really hard time scraping it up. So those were kind of my two biggest fears. And as you can see here, the setup that we made was this little John Deere 3032E with a Kotec uh, box blade on the loader actually. So we welded up some John Deere loader mounts on that box blade, put the blade on the loader itself, and then ran a Frontier regular rear blower on the three point with some extensions on the blower just to get it to be a little bit wider. And so the idea behind that was we wanted to be able to back drag away from the garage doors without leaving the pile up that a regular snow blower would leave at the garage door. Um, but I also wanted the capability if it was a super heavy storm that we could use just the regular blower and, and back into it. And the setup worked pretty well. But the thing that really got me to take interest in the inverted and, and ultimately switch up the entire setup the next year was I met a guy named Paul Vanderzon, who's kind of the the OG of the business model that that I kind of follow and I know some of you guys follow. And he really kind of convinced me that the tractors can climb over a lot more snow than you think and packing the snow down is really not an issue. So I decided to give it a try. And I'd like to just lay out some of the advantages and disadvantages for each type of blower because there are certain scenarios where you do not want an inverted snow blower. However, if you're doing residential snow, I think it's pretty much the ultimate piece of equipment. So we will go through that now. So as you can see here, this is my first inverted blower setup. It was a John Deere 3046R with a Pronovo 74 inch. I actually just sold it this summer to a friend of mine. He's going to make good use of it. Really the only reason for selling was the 3 Series is a little bit on the small side to do driveways. It's certainly manageable and it performed quite well. It really overall pretty much kept up with the 4 Series. It's just built a little bit lighter and it's slightly slower um, and the 4 is just kind of the ideal small machine for doing driveways. So going into the advantages and disadvantages for each, we'll start with the conventional rear snow blower on a tractor. So I would say the first advantage that this piece of equipment has would be it's pretty cheap. You can get a lower end model for a couple thousand bucks. A lot of homeowners and property owners have them. They're pretty simple and they're, they're mass produced. Frontier, Kubota, all of those implements that the OEM manufacturers make are actually made in the same factory in Quebec. It's called, I can't remember what it's called, um, R something. Anyways, they're, they're relatively inexpensive and, and easy to come by. A lot, of, a lot of dealerships will stock them, they'll have quite a few to choose from, 
from your lower end, like your Farm King and your Lucknow or, or similar brands, and then with Norman and Pronovos being kind of the best in the industry. You will spend a similar amount uh, for the higher end blowers. You'll probably spend um, eight to 12,000, depending on the size and whatnot, for both a good conventional Pronovos or Norman versus a inverted but there are a lot more options on the regular side and more volume so you can get a lower end one for for quite a bit less next thing that's a big advantage for the conventional is the fact that you can blow back piles from the city plow or just huge piles that you've stacked up you can load trucks with them if you get the right size all that kind of stuff for more so for commercial properties but even when it comes to the end of a driveway it's nice that you can just blow that snow right back without having to worry about going over it at first when i had my metal plus on the 4066 i had an inverted on the rear and if that tractor was primarily doing commercial it would have been better off with a conventional in the rear just because when it comes to stacking up piles and whatnot you want to be able to get those back so that's another big thing for the conventional another thing that well i sort of already mentioned it but Blowing the snow before driving over it is certainly preferable to driving over the snow for obvious reasons. Um, you are always on solid ground, you have much better traction, you don't have to worry about getting stuck in the snow you're driving over. It's just kind of a basic thing, but clearly that's, that's an advantage for the conventional. When it comes to cons for the conventional, there are a few for sure. It's slow. Um, if I can't exactly explain it but it's not so much a tractor power thing it's more just an operator when you're backing in you're turned around and and backing into a driveway there's almost no way you're going to be doing the same speed you can with an inverted um, when you pull back with an inverted you drive over the snow drop the blower in front of the garage door and you can take off fast if you want to with the conventional, I've heard guys say they can do it just as fast, and eh, maybe, I don't know, but overall, you're not gonna be keeping up the same speed as you would with an inverted blower. Another disadvantage is obviously you're driving backwards. Now this could be eliminated if you had it on the front of a tractor, but that's kind of a different story. Most people are running it on the rear of, a, of their tractor. So clearly your head's turned around the whole time that you're doing your work. So you're backing up and, and blowing at the same time. And it's just not, not ideal, of course. Another big thing too is that you leave piles at the end wherever you leave. So even with a high-end snowblower that can really um, process the snow, you're still gonna come to the end of your pass and have a significant little pile there. And if you were using a conventional on a driveway, that would be right in front of your garage door. And I'm quite sure people would not like that. So you'd either have to shovel it, get your shovel crews to do it. They won't be happy about that. It's really bad news. So if you're using it out on the road or in a commercial lot or blowing back piles, something like that, really not an issue. But if you're doing driveways, you can't be leaving messes like that in people's driveways. So that's, that's a serious con for sure. Um, moving on to the inverted, we'll do the pros first. Driving out onto the road is a bigger deal than you'd think. Rather than like with a back scraper or a front mounted blower, or something like that, where you drive in, do the blowing or the, or the removing of snow going forward and then back out onto the road, backing into the driveway is much preferable because you turn around, you're looking around, you have to look out for obstacles and everything still, of course. You have to look to where your garage door is, when to put down the blower. But it's much better to do that than be backing out onto the road because really, you only have to look straight behind you. You can back up quickly. If you are backing out onto the road like you would be with, with a back scraper or something like that, or a conventional blower mounted on the front, you have to look both ways before going out on the road in reverse. So you're cramping your neck that way, 
you're less likely to see oncoming traffic. It's just bad news. And like I mentioned before, whenever you're driving forward, you can just go faster. You have more maneuverability. So rather than backing into a driveway with a conventional where you kind of have to position yourself right, make sure you're in a straight line going back, it's far easier to do that going forward. You just back up over the snow, it doesn't really matter where you drive, you can get a little squirrely if you want to. Position yourself properly at the corner of the house and line up with your snow stake and then you can just gas it going forward. So that's another, uh, or I guess that's the first big pro for the inverted. Second, we sort of already mentioned with the conventional, but having no piles in front of the garage doors is really probably the most important thing that, that the inverted has to offer. So especially with these new style blowers like the Cyclone and the Norman Hybrid and the, the Bilodeau Scraper, when you back up to a garage door, drop that blower, come out onto the road, you leave a minimal amount of snow. Most of the time you don't even have to clean it up. If the city had came by and scraped the road really perfectly and you didn't want to make a mess, maybe you take one tiny little quick pass at it and instead of um, blowing it on the front yard, you could just kind of swoop it away. With the old style inverted, you were still leaving a good mess on the roads. So you had to clean that up. You'd have to pull it away and then blow it onto the curb or, or onto the front lawn. So that was an extra pass there. And most importantly, the snow is just gone from the garage door. So it's, it's much better to have your mess out on the road where you can deal with it there. And like I said, with these new styles, there really isn't much mess to deal with. Another thing we already sort of touched on is they're just faster. You, I can't quite quantify it, but you're just always going to be driving faster going forward than you ever could in reverse. More comfortable, uh, backing into a driveway, you do have to turn around, but it's much preferable to be turned around when you're just driving back rather than being turned around when you're doing the work. So that comes back to just driving forward is much preferable. Cons of the inverted, uh, there's really only one big one, and that is the fact that you have to drive over your snow first. So it's not a deal breaker. The technology works, but this is probably the biggest thing that keeps people from investing in them is because it looks like the tractor could get stuck at any time, really. If you have deep snow and you want to get that plow frill taken care of, um, yeah, it's, they're really not the best piece of equipment in deep, deep snow. Now, the reason they work with our business model is because we continually go around and really you should never have your driveway with more than two feet of snow in it. If that's what's going on, you've got bigger problems than the equipment you're using. Um, so there are guys out, out east and in certain areas that get just ridiculous amounts of snow and they're better off with a conventional blower and someone will have like a scraper on the front, something like that. So there, there are areas that get extreme amounts of snow where the inverted doesn't work. However, for most of us, driving over the snow, although it's not as ideal as taking care of it first, the advantages of the inverter kind of outweigh the, the cons in that way. So even though you are backing over the snow, you're somewhat compacting it, but the blower will scrape that, that snow that you push down up no problem. So that's really not an issue. But I would say that's really the biggest fear most people have when thinking about investing in an inverted, as well as the, the biggest downside of them. Another small thing is they're a little bit more expensive, like we said. I mean, a conventional high-end blower versus a high-end inverted are gonna be similar pricing, so it's not that big a deal, but you do have less selection and they're in high demand, so you really have to order if you're looking for a new blower uh, mid-summer at latest because they make even though they make hundreds of these things they they move quickly and there's some big boys in Quebec that'll scoop up 50 blowers at a time or, or who really knows um, but yeah that's kind of all I got for you today if you think of anything else as far as advantages for either type of blower let me know in the comments and I'm sure we can continue the discussion there if you're looking to learn more about the business model or equipment or really any anything related, 
join my Facebook group. I'll have a link below. It's called United Snow Pros, and that's where the guys in our very niche business model are all talking about the industry, different methods of uh, really everything. So join the group, and we'll continue the discussion there.